Hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon from beautiful Vienna. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Making It in Austria. It is a great pleasure to record it again this week. Last week, it was a short break as we had our monthly get together with the, with the community. It was great here in Vienna. Uh, and today I'm happy to uh, invite Dudu Genzel. I hope I did it well. All these Turkish uh, telenovelas or <laughs> soaps uh, paid off. Uh, Dudu, welcome. Hi, Adela. I'm very happy to join you here and very nervous as well. That's good. That's good. So then let's <laughs> let's start with that. So I'm really happy uh, to have you. I've been following your work of, uh, for some time, uh, especially this year. So I noticed a little bit your work through the Vienna 21, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where was this tech fair? I was uh, invited to give a short uh, talk. So we know each other a little bit, but not uh, that well. So I'm, I'm really excited uh, to hear your story. You too as well. Uh, I asked you to start with this quote uh, that you have on your LinkedIn profile. It's mm -hmm. very, I'm very curious about it. It's very clear, uh, short, and you are one of the few that has this quote on their LinkedIn profile and stands it out. So I will tell it, it's diversity is a fact, inclusion is a choice by Justin Trudeau. So mm -hmm. what does it tell you, Dudu? I mean, the thing is, for me, diversity is there already. So, um, and I think this is the uh, intention Justin Trudeau had when he taught, he said that. Um, so diversity is something no one can change. There are 50% of the world are women. Uh, there are 50, I don't know the exact number here in Vienna, but there are a lot of my, uh, people with migration background in Vienna. So. You know, it's there, but we definitely need to take action so that we include all these people. So it's not enough to acknowledge that diversity is there. We have to mm -hmm. put some action into it and inclusion is that action. So, and, and I think this is something which is very important for my work and also for my private life. Um, so whatever I do, I try to include people from different perspectives, from different backgrounds, so that the picture gets more colorful. Hmm. So if when I do events, I try to see how can I balance it out? How can, how can I reach out to people who uh, probably won't be attracted to that mm -hmm. event in the first moment? Yeah. So I need to yes. go the extra mile to reach out to those people. Does it really work out every time? Of course not, but every time I'm motivated to do that extra step to include people. Absolutely. So I'm getting more and more aware of it. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm getting, paying more attention to the events that I am visiting and to uh, see if they have included everyone. So if that panel is talking to me or not. So, because as you know yourself, there are, millions of events and uh, throughout the day and happening around the world. Now with Zoom, we can join many of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm really starting to be uh, very cautious about where I'm going to put my time and some of them to pay for it. Definitely. And just today I saw an event that is going to happen in Germany. It's like it's exciting. And there's like six men on the panel <laughs> okay. and two of them call Alexander. And I just had to post over there and said, are there not any female founders in Germany university in your community or anywhere that you are? So it's like, it's too, this was too obvious that I just had to say yeah. something. You know, there's also another very great uh, quote I heard from a lady from the Singular University. She was mm -hmm. here for a speech at the Forbes event mm -hmm. and she also had a very nice quote on her, one of her slides saying, diversity is inviting the people to the party. Mm -hmm. Inclusion is to ask them to dance. Yeah. And, I, I, and that's, that's it, you know? It's not enough to just to reach out. You have to some, somehow put more action into getting involved with the people. Ex uh, uh, yeah. That's a very yeah. nice quote too, so I, yeah. I really like the metaphor of having a party with different people, but no one talks to each other. Everyone is in, yeah. in, in their own bubble. Uh, so the inclusion would be like getting the people out of their bubbles and interacting with each other. 
And if I may add, so not, not only to ask them to dance waltzer, there can be other dances as well, right? Because Austrian would be the waltzer and not everybody can. I, <laughs> I, I tried, I did some classes. So when we came here and I visited uh, the VU Ball, Mm -hmm. As I'm the alumna from the very executive academy, so I went there. So my husband and I we tried mm -hmm. and tried, and at the end of the day, we just danced. So it wasn't waltz or something in between. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Yeah, I saw that the balls are coming back. So at least I think the diversity mm -hmm. ball was happening the the other day in Vienna. I saw it, but I wasn't able to attend. Well, but yeah. I'm not a ball person, to be honest. So I I went to to the VU ball, I think only once, even though I'm an alumni. Mm -hmm. so I, not even as a student, I went there. So I'm not a ball person. The only ball I really enjoy a lot is the Integrationsball. Okay. Which is a very colorful happening with no dress code. Everyone can come however they want to come. And there are different stages. So it's, it's one of my favorite ones because it's such a colorful happening. Thank That's you for letting me about that one. So it's, I hope it will happen uh, next year. So to, to check that one. Um, yes, so to all should. the viewers here who are listening to us, so the Gratian Ball is a great place to be. Do do so you mentioned a little bit about you know diversity, so the mm. inclusion, how important it is, how you're trying to do mm. it as much through your, through your work. And you mentioned that you have as well personal connection to that. Mm. Because as all of my guests, so they are very driven in in that area as well. So that mm. they have their, you know, career, so the, the business professionals, and they have us all, everybody has a side projects, you know, some uh, you know, baby projects. Mm. Uh, so what drove you to this? Um you know, this topic, so your personal story. First of all, I'm born Turkish. So I, I came to Austria when I was seven. So I'm well aware about my migration background. Um, so this somehow put me into connection with those questions because diversity is something which definitely touches my heart because I want to be invited to, to, the, all, the, to all the parties as well. So, um, yeah, I think it, it came very naturally that I was somehow interested in the topic. And then after studying business, I got in touch with different initiatives, mm -hmm. support, inclusion, diversity, etc. I worked for a media project called Bieber. Pro mm -hmm. Probably most yes. of the people here know them. Uh, they do great jobs. I, I still love them. <laughs> um, so there also my, my project was about how to include people more into the cultural scene of Vienna, mm -hmm. how to make young people who do have different backgrounds more aware of the whole activities going on in Vienna yeah. because most of that cultural activities are still um, very much kept in that bubble. Mm -hmm. So there is a barrier of entering those operas, culture house, whatsoever. So we did some great projects on lowering that barrier. So it came very naturally. So I was always involved with different kinds of people with different backgrounds. I think it, it, it really was something which came naturally because mm -hmm. of my own background probably. Yeah. What is that you are doing at the moment? So what is your focus? Mm -hmm. So right now, so I work for the startup services of the Vienna Business Agency, and I, that, I changed a lot of roles within the startup services. I first of all started with the migrant enterprises, because I was already in that diversity um, bubble. We can call it a bubble as well. So I was first in the diversity uh, topic. So I started with the migration uh, enterprises with a focus on migrant enterprises, where we had some services on di in different languages. We still have that project going on. It's, uh, um, it's support for people with another mother tongue than German. Mm -hmm. So we provide services in 17 different languages. So people mm -hmm. who want to be self-employed get the right uh, information in their own mother tongue, at least at the beginning. Of course, later on, they need to figure out things in German too, but mm -hmm. at, at least before they make the decision of being self-employed, they should be able to access all the information which is important in their first language. Mm -hmm. 
So I started with that and then um, I changed my focus on female entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. which is still very close to my heart. So there we, um, I started doing some projects on how to support female entrepreneurs, how to interlink them with, with different communities. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we started doing some programs, uh, kind of in incubation programs for female founders with um, not necessarily startups, but female founders with a idea which has tendencies to grow. Mm -hmm. So this was something unique because all the incubation programs are there are mainly for scalable business models. Mm -hmm. So the Durchstarterinnen Lab was something for non-scalable, but for business models which have the tendency to grow in an organic way. Um, and now since 2020, end of 2020, I switched again my, my, my focus and now I'm working on the international positioning within mm -hmm. the startup services. So I work a lot with our international startup networks within okay. Europe and I'm responsible for the Vienna Up Festival, mm -hmm. which is hopefully coming up again in, in 2022. Uh, in live, you mean face to face? I hope so. <laughs> We're still figuring things out, but I hope so. It's I, at least hybrid. At least, yeah. You know, it would be it would be uh, not really smart to to switch yeah. everything to offline because we'll learn so much in the digital world. So we will definitely keep things in digital as well. But I'm looking forward to have it in a hybrid version. I honestly, I don't know about you, uh, but I prefer this hybrid mm. for for certain topics, mm. you know, for to pick up the knowledge, yeah. you know, to, to yeah. you know, see who's mm. talking, check a couple of, uh, you know, speeches. Yeah. Networking is a different story. So I, I do do yeah. online as well, uh, mm. but, you know, it has its, its flavors. So it's not like useless. It's like, okay, mm. but now it's really, really powerful. And uh and very convenient, you know, that before I was, I'm thinking like people were excluded, right? Yeah. I was just talking about the friend about it, you know, for instance, Mobile World Congress, Barcelona. Mm -hmm. uh, that's in, in my area mm -hmm. uh, of expertise. And then, you know, people who could go there were like the CEOs, the executives, yeah. you know, there's a list of people, it's a limited number, everything is unknown for, everything is not up and so on. It's, and it's very costly, very, very costly. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I was waiting in my company, I was five years and I was like, always like waiting for the next time. So for I, I have a chance to go there and meet the people and network and so on. Right. And so that was very, very ex felt excluded. Mm -hmm. True, but you don't yeah. have the access to the same um, opportunities. So equally opportunities, like yeah. only with, and then you think, okay, how do you bring more women in the, mm -hmm. in the uh, uh, C-suite or executive suite? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't go there, if you don't meet all these people and they don't yeah. know you, it's really, you know, it's hard to to get into yeah. that space. True, true. Yeah, that's why it definitely makes sense to keep it, keep it both. Yeah, keep, keep it. it. But, you know, some, you know, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to have something to touch as well <laughs> and to connect with people on the same event. You know, lately I, or two or three days ago, I joined the event of Metropole. Heart. Yes, it was on Friday. I missed yeah. that once. That was such a great opportunity. I saw it. Because, you know, I was able to connect to people, meet people I already knew, meet some new people, you know, everyone I knew brought like someone else to the group. So that yeah. was really, really nice. So I'm really looking forward to have more occasions to have this kind of um, yeah. festival environment. So yeah, yeah human that was interaction. Missing in the dig yeah, <laughs> that was definitely missing in the digital version. Yeah. yeah, I hope you will join us at one of the next uh, gatherings of Make Meet yeah. in Austria. It's, uh, it's it's diverse and inclusive, so you can dance, you can invite people to <laughs> dance. We can yeah. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> to do throughout your work, you've done a lot. You know, you mentioned you are a specialist, you know, expert in 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 this area. So, what would you advise to people that are considering to move to to Austria? You know, uh, let's say from Bosnia or mm -hmm. from Turkey. So what was your experience throughout those? Mm -hmm. I mean, 
my experience is a little bit different because I moved here when I was a child and it was not my personal decision to move to Australia. So my father came first, then we joined him after three years, I think. I was seven. So I, you know, I wasn't really prepared to be in Austria. So I was, um, and I was at the beginning very mad at my parents that they took the step to Austria. But now I really, I'm very grateful they did because uh, for them, it was a huge step outside mm -hmm. of their comfort zone. Uh, and, but it was super valuable for me because, you know, being foreign somewhere adds so much to your personality, mm -hmm. to your, um, to your how, how you perceive the world outside. I believe. Mm. Uh, so whoever wants to come to Austria at the later stage, because I grew in into that mindset, uh, because in the beginning, it was really hard to deal with that foreignness. Being foreign was not something nice, was mm. not something positive. It was, yeah. I always wanted to be Austrian and I never wanted to be a foreigner. And it took me, I think, over 15 years to really see the positive sides of being a foreigner. Mm -hmm even though I'm, I don't feel foreign anymore, but, you know, being yeah. different, maybe yeah. let's put it that way. Um, so it took me a long time to perceive that as something, a treasure, because it's something which adds so much to you, to your life, and gives you so many positive aspects. So for people who come to a later stage, they should be aware of, of what it feels, you know, they should be prepared that they feel, they will feel foreign, and they have to try to frame it positively. Yeah. Otherwise, it's really a big challenge and it's hard to overcome. If you feel foreign all the time and it's something bad, then it's really hard. But if you feel foreign, but still can mm. go with the flow. <laughs> no, if you feel foreign and you know this is a, uh, this is a positive aspect of you being having the option of you know feeding yourself out of two pools is, is, is so this is a, something we sh someone should be aware of because even though this is also something which confuses me a lot because I can't really compare my experience with someone like you for example who came here at the later stage as an expert as a professional person so you had already a standing in the society yeah. i had to grow into grow into that standing um yeah it's really hard to give recommendations now i realize <laughs> <laughs> but being aware of where you are going like you know i i do have some friends who came here at the later stage um, to Austria, and they try to stick to their own people. Mm -hmm. And that's something which really um, makes the whole process of living here much harder, I think, because then you're always among people who are like you mm. and never have the chance to understand other people outside of your own circle. And mm -hmm. then you will be very much surprised when you are forced to get out of your own circle. Hmm. So trying to keep it more open and being committed to make friends with different kind of people. I don't say only with Austrians, but with different kind of people so yeah. because out of different bubbles. Absolutely. Yeah. And Vienna has so much to offer, right? So it's a it very has. multi uh, cultural, multi international uh, city uh, mm -hmm. to live. And for us as well, it was the same. You know, we 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 set ourselves without knowing so we we didn't know much about Austria before we came mm -hmm. here we knew it's like we came here a little bit uh, you know years mm -hmm. before as tourists mm -hmm. we had our best friend here and he was working here we, we came here and saw it at some point we realized uh, it's easier to get here than in than in Germany mm -hmm. back in 2013 mm -hmm. um uh, without knowing the language and uh you know and it's very close to our home so that was also one of the things too close to our parents so if mm -hmm. something you know then you always have this thing okay if something happens i can be there within a few hours of uh, mm -hmm. drive um and when we came here so we came with the intention that we want to have friends from all over the places so all over mm -hmm. the world so that was you know kind of unique opportunity because when we grew up, both of us in Bosnia, we come from a very, you know, same 
from the same place we studied in, in Sarajevo so we were surrounded more or less like with people like ourselves and then we said okay finally we come to Vienna so I we said I don't want to spend time with just with Bosnians you know or Croatians or Serbians and so on I want to have people all over the world so that was our decision without think without knowing all the you know facets and all the discussion the media and the integration that wasn't we weren't thinking about that at all we were thinking okay there are some people from some other parts of the world and we want to meet them you know True, but you know what? There is a very uh, tiny road there because I I know that like four or five years ago um, when I started making more Turkish friends because when I grew up I grew up as I grew up in a very small town in Lower Austria mm-hmm. so there I was basically for the first five years I think I was the only Turkish girl in my class so I had no Turkish friends at all and then later on I got a few but really I was more or less more in the Austrian circle but then I I moved to Vienna for my studies and I met a lot of people coming here for studies yes so so a lot of people from Turkey coming here for studies and they were so different to the people I met in Lower Austria to the Turkish people I met in so they were very interesting to me so I started making friends with them and then at some point I catched myself justifying my Turkish friends towards my Austrian friends because I felt like oh if I have too many Turkish friends maybe they will think I'm not well integrated anymore so Mm. you know just something it's Mm. also just a it's not because people gave me the feeling they would think that it was mm. my yeah. mind <laughs> that thought I need to tell people I'm still very good integrated but I have a lot of Turkish friends now I don't really care where my friends are from I just have friends yeah. but back then I remember the times where I really was very very cautious about whether I have Turkish or Austrian friends and and if I talk when I talked to to Austrians, I, I would really argue why I have those Turkish friends. It's just really, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that because my journey was we came here and then I was like exploring all the cultures, you know, and exploring everything what was there through my work and uh, in, in the free time and having one or the other, you know, from, from Bosnia. Mm-hmm that we got recommended through, you know, people that uh, we already knew. And then at some point, I think it was, um, was 2018, 2019, I realized there's this community called Business Women of Bosnia and Herzegovina here in Vienna. And I started to be curious about it. And I joined their very first event that they had here. And then I joined in the follow-up and I started to be a member. And now I'm a uh, vice president, the active member of uh, the community. So I found myself over there, right? So I, I'm yeah, I had that transition myself because I was like, okay, I know that part. Okay, good. But I want to get to know everything else. What is there for a few years? And then at some point I realized, okay, I, I want to find the ways that I have, uh, you know, balance in this. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm missing this. I felt I'm missing, you know, Bosnian culture and language, of course, and not talking about just Bosnia, about our childhood, writing on my Facebook in, in, in Bosnian language, not just in English or in German and so on. It's, you know, I grew up there, so it's a very big part of, of who I am. So I had my, you know, all Definitely. over the places. And, you know, sometimes it's just the easiness of not having to explain yourself and just feeling whatever you're feeling right now, you know, watching a movie and you don't have to translate anything. This is also something I enjoy a lot when I hang out with my Turkish friends because it, when we hear words, we do have the common understanding of what this yeah. word stands for. We don't need to explain it. So this is also, but yeah. Yeah. But this is, you know, it's, it's so sad if people feel um, bad about having this or that friends, you know, it's, no one should 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 question your choice of friends because this is not really showing anything about your willingness to to be Austrian or whatsoever. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. And 
um, I do have a feeling so because I have some uh, family members here from long time ago. So it was a different 30 years ago. It was a different uh, way. And I, I have some Austrians who have some roots in uh, Hungary, but they don't speak the language. They don't know anything about it. They're, they're born here and that's it. So mm. no what. So at, in our generation, I believe it's a bit different. So so we allow ourselves, you know, we are very outspoken, allow ourselves, you know, to say, okay, you know, I want to have friends from all over the world. And that doesn't say anything about integration, anything about how how much I'm Austrian or, or Bosnian yeah. or whatever. So it's it's yeah. just, you know, what I enjoy. Definitely, definitely. And it's, you know, you don't have to pick a side. You know, I grew up a lot thinking I need to pick a side. And I knew at home, you know, my parents are very traditional guest workers. So they speak German, but really not proper German. So at home, we spoke only Turkish, but not really a lot because at some point you drift apart from your family if if you get too much into the to the local system here because of course they have different ideas than i had back then so i you know back then being turkish mean meant a lot of limitations having a lot of limits and i didn't like any limits so i thought okay no i don't want to be turkish at all i want to be austrian because i felt like all my austrian friends were so much more free they had so yeah. much more freedom etc so my parents unfortunately teached me uh, or taught me a, a very wrong side of turkishness because they you know it was more about rules and not being too I don't know. So, so it was very conservative perspective on. So this is, was something which was not interesting to me. So I denied everything Turkish. So I didn't speak any Turkish, and I literally learned Turkish at the age of, I think I was twenty when I moved to Vienna to start studying here. I met those Turkish people at the university. I figured out I'm not able to talk to those people in Turkish because they, you know, they don't really listen to me because I wasn't able to talk any proper Turkish they listened but it was not really you know yeah. sometimes yeah. people don't speak proper language which is a stupid perspective by the way but still if they don't speak properly then you don't really take the no. stuff they tell you for smart you know they you don't yeah. think it's smart what they say so that was my feeling with my Turkish so I literally love to myself for one year I had no contact to anyone or I was just joining the group but never talking so I read throughout the whole year I only read Turkish books so that I was able to be uh, to to have a fluent conversation with Tur people from Turkey who only spoke Turkish oh it was this <laughs> was crazy that that one year was really crazy <laughs> but not but then the more I the more fluent I was in Turkish, the better I understood my German perspective. Mm -hmm. and the, the less I, you know, the less the, the, the pressure on me was, got to pick a side. You know, after being able to speak in Turkish as well, I was able to say, hey, I can be both. I can yeah. be Austrian and Turkish. I don't have to pick a side. I can be something in between. I don't have to call myself austro uh, austro turkish or whatsoever i can be just to do it this and i don't have to pick it so, that was very uh, uh, a relieving do you see a relieving yeah relieving moment for me that i was able to to say okay i don't i don't have to pick it i pick a side it well, goes well with each other and then it turns into something very positive and then you get stronger with that yeah. thinking because yeah. otherwise you're always dependent on the limitation of others mm. because i was so proud when people told me oh today you're so different than others i'm like okay who are the others <laughs> <laughs> because they didn't know any other turkish people but they still thought that i'm so different mm. um so but i was back then i was very proud of that because yeah. i felt special uh, and I know that the people didn't say it by um, bad because they had bad mm. intentions, but they said it and I was proud of it. And 
Yeah, so, and that, that was something, okay, I don't need anyone to tell me I'm different. I don't need anyone to tell me, oh, you're a good migrant. I don't need anyone to tell me, oh yeah, you're welcome here. I know I belong here. So this is something which needs time to settle yeah. in your mind. And after it settles, it gives you really a lot of power. It does. You get rooted. You know. You yeah. get. You, you're stable, so you, mm. you know what what you exactly yeah. want. What you mentioned is is well my experience with um with the language here. So German language, I learned it uh, here, and it's not an easy language, right? So Bosnian either, Turkish mm. either. So they are very you know you know complicated. There's so many rules as well. So it's not the, German is not the only language who has that has rules, and. Uh, I was very, I think it has as well with the attitude, that's what I got, but very surprised by people, they, you know, helped me around. So I said, I really want to learn the language. So I don't want to go back and forth from English, switching back and forth. And I will never learn because it will be just easier. So the brain is lazy. So it will just easier to go back to English and English and English over and over again. So I had a very supportive colleagues and a very supportive culture, you know, company that I joined when I came here that I said, okay, look, I don't know the exact word, but I can explain to you. So what I mean by that, and then you can help, you know, we can feel, help me with what is the word. So I, I had a really, you know, positive experience. So my experience was very positive in that sense. It might be because I joined, you know, in, in a, as a business professional so and then yeah. it was a different story and, and the, the company's culture was very important mm -hmm. uh back then because they were very open it was very swedish because tele2 mm -hmm. is a swedish corporation and they they they're very open very yeah. flexible very innovative so thinking forward mm -hmm. so that uh, was very uh beneficial for me and they helped me so to speak freely you know if i make a grammar mistake and i I live with it. So I just uh, continue with it. And recently to help me as well, I, I went through my journey with our language, Bosnia, mm -hmm. because nowadays I use mostly, you know, either English or German, and then the Bosnian is the last one. And what I really love from, from Austrians here is that they talk as they talk at home. I don't know how it's in, in Turkey, but in Bosnia, so you have this language that you hoch. Deutsch or Hoch Bosnian that you learn in schools. And this is the language that you should talk when you are in business world, when you are going, I don't know, to the amt and you need something. So you talk very, you know, very professional. So, you know, you don't use the language that you use at home, your accents, dialects, and so on. And what I really love here in Austria is that they do that. So for instance, it happened to me many times that, you know, we are sitting, so I'm having a meeting with the customers and they, we are sitting in Steiermark and they are speaking there the way they speak. You know, and the, 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 the Viennese are speaking daily, and then there's the one from Vorarlberg. Somehow we find, you know, they understand each other, but I really love that because in, in our culture, unfortunately, it was mostly, you know, the way you say at home, mm -hmm. you know, it's like mostly, mm -hmm. no, you don't say that when you go to the city, you know, the, the village people and the, the, uh, you go to the city. Sure. Yeah. yeah, so I, I love that part and it brought, it helped me as well to think about my language and then basically now when I write in our language, in my language in, in, in fa on Facebook, I write as we talk, as yeah. we speak, because I'm thinking like I'm going to forget all this. And if I not use it, and it's it, the language is very powerful, and then it should Definitely. be used as, as we are. Definitely, it is. It's the same in Turkey. In Turkey, the professional language is a very formal one. Yeah. Even in shops, sometimes they talk to each other as they were talking to a CEO of something, I don't know. So it's a very formal language in Turkish too. But obviously, it depends on the area. So if if you're working for a creative agency, they talk as they live. So yeah. however they would work, talk at, at yeah. home too. But for me, my German, so I, I came here uh, at the age of seven and I didn't spoke any, I didn't speak any German. So I learned everything at school. So at home, my parents couldn't speak proper German so um, there was no way to learn German at at home and my parents they're not very well educated but they value education a lot so that's 
why I was lucky because my dad said, okay, we won't buy any Turkish television until you learn German. And they got their first Turkish television when I left for university to wow. Vienna. So we never had Turkish television at, at home. At some point when we were able, I don't even remember the time when I wasn't able to talk uh, German because my school was so supportive. My teachers were great. My, um, so all the other uh, students or the, the school children were really very supportive. They were curious to get to know each other, to get to know us because I was the only foreign person in their class. So yeah. um, they were very motivated to be friends with me and were, were very welcoming. So I was really, really lucky. So that's why, and I got a lot of additional classes from the school. So I was really very quick in learning German. Mm -hmm. um, but but um, my parents really insisted on not having a Turkish television. And then we learned German at home from TV. And sometimes people still ask me whether I'm uh, German, so whether I'm from German, because I do <laughs> speak slightly German German, uh, because I learned. So when I was at home, I was watching German TV. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely learned. Uh, so big, big part of my German skills are from television. I had the other experience, the other way around. So because yeah. I picked the, I learned German here, uh, the classes, mm -hmm. Deutsche Academy, and then I started working. And mm -hmm. we had team the whole to all out the Austria. Then I joined the global team with Intelli2, and one of the colleagues we got one new colleague from Germany. He's from Bayern. Oh, okay. And the moment that we we just Elma, so we just started talking. And he said, oh, my God, you already picked the Austrian accent. <laughs> <laughs> I said, OK, <laughs> I don't know how I did it, but, you know, yeah. somehow. I really <laughs> tried hard to learn Mostviertlerisch because I am ah, from Mostviertel, which is a part of Low Austria. Uh, but I'm not. I, I remember my friends testing my German skills with Wachkatzelschwaf. <laughs> Oh my so god. So they were like, uh, if you can say that, then you're okay. Yeah, then then your German is very good. So a I squirrel, I no? spent a lot of time to learn Wachkatzelschwaf. And now I can say it. I think what I'm, is it? Is it the squirrel or it's something? Yeah, the, the tail of a squirrel. Oh my god. Wachkatzelschwaf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Check. Yeah, uh, definitely check. <laughs> Thank you, Dudu. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your story. As you see, the time uh, flew yes. and uh, we had a very present conversation. But before we wrap up, I wanted to ask you, what are you reading? So any book that you uh, yes. would like to recommend? Uh, I just finished uh, The Beekeeper of Aleppo, which was a very touching story of a Syrian fam family fleeing from Syria to Europe. and Maybe it's it's too much cliche for a lot of people out there, but for me, it was really nice to, again, have a story behind all the stories we hear at the media. So that was a very touching story for me. And now I'm rereading a book again in Turkish, which is called The Devil Within Us. Mm -hmm. It's about how we find excuse. It's a very old um, book, actually. It's a classic in Turkish. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the Turkish literature. And it's about how the human being tends to seek for excuses for failure outside of its own reach. Uh, it's a great book. So it's it's a very nice book. I don't know if there is, there there must be a, a English or German translation, obviously, but it's really a very nice one. Thank I don't you, know how the translation would be uh, in German, but uh, the Turkish version of it is great. So if there are Turkish people, watching us and they haven't heard about uh, devil in us please go and check Sabatin Ali Ichimizdeki Shaitan it's a great really this great. was a nice uh, wrap up to do <laughs> thank you so much I will link it so I will write the names uh, and I will try to find uh, the English or German uh, link uh, definitely there will be Thank you, Dudu, so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure to finally meet you. So to connect yes. the face on LinkedIn to the person. 
Um, and thank you everyone for watching and uh, joining us. Um, I will link the Dudu's uh, LinkedIn contact details so you can get in touch with her. And of course, if you know anyone, so if you have someone that has a story to share with us, please let me know, write me on LinkedIn or uh, share here in the comment section. I'm looking forward. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Adela. It was really, I, I, I really enjoyed a lot. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you.